What's up, Bobcats? In this lecture, we're going to go over digestive physiology. Uh, more specifically, we're going to talk about uh, chemical digestion. Uh, but before I get started, uh, make sure to like and subscribe. So the first thing that I want to point out here is this is the esophagus, this is the stomach, and then this is the duodenum. This here, this is the pancreas. And so in order for us to absorb the nutrients and get it into the um, intestinal cells, we have to uh, break these nutrients down. And so there are different enzymes that are uh, located at different spots. And so one of the enzymes found within the mouth is what's known as um, amylase. So within the mouth, you have the salivary glands. So for instance, the parotid gland. And what we're breaking down here is uh, carbohydrates. So salivary glands, they break down uh, carbohydrates. Uh, more specifically, it breaks down starch. And so the enzyme that we utilize for this is what's known as amylase. Okay, so once we start to digest the food, this bolus is what travels down the esophagus and then it becomes chyme here in the stomach. And so this fluid-like mixture here in the stomach, um, we're further digesting um, the food that we've consumed, but we're mainly focusing on breaking down proteins. And so within the stomach, we have these gastric glands. So some of these specific gastric glands, we have what's known as the parietal cells. And these parietal cells, they secrete what's known as hydrochloric acid. And so we need hydrochloric acid because one of the enzymes that's going to degrade some of these uh, peptides or these proteins is what's known as pepsin. So pepsin is derived from pepsinogen. And pepsinogen is what's released by the chief cells. So these chief cells, they'll release the pepsinogen, and then hydrochloric acid is what's going to convert pepsinogen into pepsin. So once we have the active pepsin, this is what will cleave specific sites on that protein. And so the target sites are the aromatic amino acids. And so this includes, so it's YFW. So this is tyrosine, this is uh, phenylalanine, and then this is tryptophan. So we're cleaving it at the specific sites, um, at this specific, um, or at this peptide. Okay, so now that we have this acidic uh, chyme mixture here within the stomach, it now gets into the duodenum. And within the duodenum, we have something that's known as entero, so it's called entero, peptidase. And enteropeptidase is responsible for activating what's known as trypsinogen. So trypsinogen. So trypsinogen is the inactive form. We use enteropeptidase to cleave it into trypsin. So where the enteropeptidase is located, that's here within the duodenum. So that's what I have drawn here in green. So once, uh, so once this, once trypsinogen, so all of this, so trypsinogen, this is what's coming from the acinar cells, so that's what these guys are. So it's coming through this way, going through the pancreatic uh, duct, and then it's getting here into the duodenum. From there, we can convert the trypsinogen into trypsin. And then trypsin is going to be responsible for activating what's known as chymotrypsinogen. So trypsin converts chymotrypsinogen into chymotrypsin. And both of these are different. They cleave at specific, uh, specific sites. So for um, trypsin, its target is basic amino acid residues. So trypsin, 
um, you know, it's a fan of like Starbucks and Lululemon, right? Um, but for the specific uh, basic amino acids, so it's R, H, and K. So this is arginine, histidine, and K is lysine. So all of these are uh, basic amino acids. Okay, so we talked about uh, chymotrypsinogen being converted to uh, chymotrypsin via trypsin. And then this, um, what this specific, uh, what it targets, it also targets aromatic amino acids. Okay, so the last one here, uh, and besides chymotrypsin, uh, trypsinogen, you also have something that's known as carboxy, actually pro carboxy peptidase. So pro carboxy peptidase gets cleaved into carboxy peptidase. And the target here is the C terminal here. So the C terminal of a peptide, so let me just show you what that is here. So for every peptide or protein, you have an N terminal, and then you also have the C terminal. So I'm just gonna draw a dipeptide here. So the N terminal is here and the C terminal is here. And the R group is gonna be here and here. And this is mean group here, and then this is this. So it's gonna cleave here at this specific site. It cleaves at the peptide bond. But we're looking for these specific um, R groups or more, more or less at the, at the C terminal. So it's gonna be cleaved there. Okay, so all three of these that I've just talked about, these are all known as proteases. And like I mentioned earlier, the acinar cells, that's what's secreting these proteases. And these acinar cells within the pancreas, they also secrete um, other enzymes. So besides protease, you have lipase. You also have, uh, for carbohydrates, you have amylase, as well as ribo and deoxyribo nuclease, cleaving RNA and DNA. Okay, so now that we've talked about all of this here within the duodenum, uh, the next thing is the brush border enzymes. So first off, where are these brush border enzymes located? So these enzymes are found on top of what's known as the microvilli. So the microvilli are on the surface of the enterocytes or the intestinal cells. So once again, so this here is the small intestine. So this right here, these are, this is the villi itself. So this is the villi. And then the microvilli is what's found here. So on one single um, small intestinal cell, that's what's blown up. And then these microvilli are here on the top. So then these brush border enzymes, that's, they're located here on top of the microvilli. Okay, so for the brush border enzymes, we have a couple of, um, a couple of different ones. <clears throat> so for carbohydrates, you have disaccharides as well as polysaccharides. So polysaccharides. And the different uh, enzymes for the disaccharides, you have MLS. So you have maltase, you have lactase, and then you also have sucrase. So maltase digests maltose into glucose and glucose. Um, lactase is what's digesting the lactose, so it breaks it into uh, glucose as well as galactose. And then uh, sucrase is digesting uh, sucrose into um, glucose and fructose. Okay, so that's for the disaccharides. So then for polysaccharides, there are a couple of uh, different enzymes that we're going to use here. So one of them is what's known as dextrinase. And then you also have uh, something that's known as, so you have dextrinase, and then the other one is glucoamylase. So the reason we need both of these enzymes is because starch is composed of uh, two different, or two main things. So you have 
So dextrinase is what works on amylopectin, and glucoamylase is what works on amylose. So the difference between the two is that for amylopectin, so if this is one, these are all glucose molecules, well, they're all linked together. So this is what's known as the alpha-1,4 glycosidic glycosidic linkage. And so amylopectin has the alpha-1,4, and so does amylose. But the difference is that for amylopectin, you also have the alpha-1,6 uh, glycosidic linkage. So it's like a branch. They're all branched over here. So that's why we need um, dextrinase for, for this one. OK, so um, now let's move on to the amino acids. So for the amino acids, we have a familiar one, which is one that we already have um, talked about. So carboxypeptidase is what cleaves peptides from the C-terminal. And then you also have amino peptidase, which cleaves amino acids from, or cleaves peptides from the N-terminal. So that's on uh, this side. And then uh, the last one that you have is dipeptidase. So we're cleaving dipeptides. OK. So um, that's going to do it for this lecture. And the next one, we'll discuss absorption.